Welcome to Scientific Drawing and Nature Journaling. I'm going to share how I use my notebook to observe outdoors. You can do the same and help to teach your students. I love to use nature as my inspiration for learning and creating. Outside, I don't see a separation between art and science. It's all here in one. It's an experience that you're simply learning from observation. So to start, you need to choose an object or organism from nature, such as a leaf or a flower, something that's interesting to you, not something that's going to move around like an insect. There's another fun drawing activity for that. So remember to be respectful of your surroundings by not harming any animals, plants, or their homes. I'm choosing to draw a cottonwood tree leaf because I'm a little obsessed with cottonwood trees right now. Next, we're going to go into the ABCs of scientific drawing. A is for accurate. We're going to draw accurately from observation. Accurate does not mean perfectly. It means you want to draw from observation, not from your imagination, or drawing a symbol. We want to draw big for B, and we want this to be proportional to the page. We want it to be big enough that we can see it so it's not too small in the corner of the page. C is for colorful. You want to use color that represents the item that you're drawing at that time. D is for detail. So you want to add the details of textures that you're noticing while you're looking closely. You can also zoom in in your drawing to show some interesting parts, say the edge of your leaf. E is for explained. You want to label, title, and write down any notes. What does it remind you of? What questions do you have? We're going to start our drawing with a basic outline. I'm going to start with the larger shapes first and mapping it out. You can outline the object for accuracy. Draw lightly so you are able to make adjustments or erase as you go. Leaves are nice because they are symmetrical and start with the midrib of the leaf as a reference point. This can then help you with proportions. I'll start with the midrib vertically of the leaf and then find my midpoint horizontally that will then find the middle of the leaf. This will be my main reference point. From the main reference point, I can break down the object into smaller proportions, say fourths. I can then concentrate on one small area at a time. As I look closer and continue to draw, I can start to see shapes that are created within the veins of the leaf. The shapes get smaller and smaller in a fractal. If I had a hand lens, I could see these in more detail. While drawing these repeated shapes, I start to see the pattern within the leaf. And I start to think about things that it reminds me of. I want to start to research and think about patterns of reptiles and how the scales are repeated. As I continue to draw, I'm using more pressure with my pencil to create shade and contrast. I don't want to go too dark because it's always easier to add more value than it is to erase and take it away. As you notice, I don't draw in every detail of the leaf on the paper. It's okay not to fill in every little piece of the drawing. Next, I start to label part of the leaf with label lines, a title, and anything I want to write down in that moment, any questions I have. I can also draw a zoomed in portion of the leaf to help explain detail, in my case, the edge of the leaf. Some may ask, why don't you just take a picture? It's easier, faster, and more accurate. I could take a picture, and I do, but it's not the same as sitting down, observing, and drawing. It makes me think in a different way about where something is and I have to make decisions how to portray that, how to communicate. As I draw, I'm constantly making decisions and talking to myself. 
sometimes silently and sometimes out loud. When I'm finished with my drawing, I can then share it, the process and the discoveries with others. This is what scientists did before the camera and still do today. Documentation and drawing of organisms date back to hundreds of years ago before cameras were invented. Take, for example, botanical drawing. This drawing form is not only beautiful, but was used in teaching and identifying botanics. Students benefit from the time you give them to slow down, observe, make decisions, and then learn to communicate them with others. You can provide them with an authentic experience and personal scientific discoveries.